Well, a very good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, you're half asleep. A very good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, that's far better. That sounds like a good rabble response. I am delighted to see you one and all as we return to our New Life services. Uh, the theme this morning for uh, the wee ones is back to school. Um, we'll hear more about that later, I'm sorry. That's maybe not your most favorite topic at the moment. And then a slightly different topic for uh, the grown-ups. Uh, welcome. Uh, can I ask you just before we get going uh, to remember in your prayers and maybe even come along if you're free uh, this afternoon at three o'clock. There's a great big service here in St. Patrick's where four young people are being ordained to be curates in the Church of Ireland. Uh, one for us, one for Balamoni, one for Antrim and one for Sedan's Cathedral in Belfast. Uh, so the Reverend Emma Carson is uh, shortly to be our new curate here in Balamina. So if you want to come and clap eyes on her and encourage her, uh, please do uh, be invited and do come along. Uh, and just for a moment before we begin our new life uh, properly, can we pause for a prayer uh, for these four young people about to be ordained? Let's bow our heads to pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we lift to you in our prayers this special day for Emma and Peter and Stu and Mithri. Lord, uh, they will stand not far from me this afternoon and a bishop will ask them some very uh, important and powerful questions. There will be a special prayer with the laying on of hands and they will be then recognised as uh, curates ordained to serve in this Diocese of Connor. Uh, Lord, whatever they're doing this morning, whatever preparations they are making, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with them, that your spirit will be with them, your joy will be with them, and that you would help them overcome their nerves and doubts and be received into this part of your church family. All these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let's all stand, everybody, as we join in our opening prayer uh, to get our new life service underway. Please do stand. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Let us come before him with thanksgiving, and praise him with music and song. Let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. Let us recount all his wonderful deeds and give thanks with our whole hearts. We do that as we sing our opening hymn of praise. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Christ alone, cornerstone, 
be seated everybody. Well we have this theme which uh, most of the kids have already done by now. You're, you're well into uh, the swing of things, the early mornings and the forgetting stuff uh, that you should have brought with you uh, to your school. I wonder, I've asked Jeff to, to play a, a mystery song this morning. He's going to just play a wee tiny bit of a very famous mystery song. And I want you, to, I want hands up, no shouting out. I want you uh, to guess the name of this song and the artist, please. So, Jeff, when you're ready, don't give them too much now. Sure. When you're ready, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> right, who knows that song? Come on, I know some of you know that. Just that wee bit. Any takers, any guesses? Come on, hands up. Hands up. I'm shocked at you. <laughs> A lot of these good church fire folk at least make the appearance of not knowing it. <laughs> Tell us what it is now. Bye. Gertie. Boy, no Gertie. Can't remember. Right, so the song of school's out. Who do you think is by? Do you know? How do you know that? I'm not you to do seven. <laughs> Jeff, I think you've got a new band member down here. <laughs> Alice Cooper. There's no light like space, there's no anything like that here. And school's out for summer. That's maybe a song that a lot of you were singing a few months back when the summer holidays came. But now we're back. Back to a new school, back to a new teacher maybe, back to nursery, back to big school, back to college, back to trying to find a job, back to something. But I, I kind of have to go back to school a little bit myself. Uh, because I'm doing this service on my own for the first time ever without Dennis and Dennis. He's going to be rector of the hospital alone. So anything could happen. But I wonder if anybody has anything with them in church this morning that would help me get back to school. Have you got anything? Did you bring it? If you've got anything, bring it out. Bring it up. I need all this. I need help here about not going back to school. Oh, gosh. What have we got here? School shirts. Right, thank you. School jumper. Well, that's never going to fit, is it? Really? We've got troubles here. A school tie. Let me get that clipped on. Hold on a wee minute. Put that in there. A pencil case. A PE kit. What's that? A pair of glasses? I've got two pairs of glasses now. A lunch bag. A file holder with all my bits and timetables. A school bag. Hold on, hold on. A water bottle, very trendy school. A ruler, a hard hickey. By the time you get out the door with all this stuff, you'd be exhausted before you got to the car. Never mind in school. But you know, this is all very good. This, this is all very useful, all this. All oh, right, you have to. You have to cope with all this stuff when you go to school, but the, there's something missing. 
There's something missing. I might have uniform and PE kits and glasses and rulers and stuff, but there's something very important. And if I don't bring this to school, I'm going to I'm going to give you a clue, and I want you to show you what you think it might be. And thank you for points. So what I really need to bring to school every day, never mind all this stuff. What I did bring to school? Shout out! My brains! <laughs> if you have uniforms and lunch boxes and water bottles and, uh, and pencil cases and file holders and, and tissues and you name it, but you've left your brains in bed, it's not going to be very good because the first thing the teacher is going to say is good morning. Good morning, everybody. And you won't know how to answer it. You don't know the word. A referee is in bed. What's your name for the register? <laughs> What's my name for the teacher? <laughs> I've left the brains in bed. Back to school. You need to be sharp. <coughs> you need to be awake, alert. Have a good breakfast. Have all your stuff. Bring your brains. There's an amazing little verse, everybody, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. And we can think about this like Jesus is the classroom teacher. And the disciples are his class. And he asks them a question. They've got their lunchbox, they've got their protein bar, they've got their pencil sharpener, they've got their mathematical calculators, they've got their sunscreen, they've got their makeup, they've got their hair clips, they've got their but he asks them a question. Who do you think I am? And while that class suddenly goes quiet, nearly everybody in the class goes quiet. Now, maybe someone had left their brains in bed that morning. They go, go, go. And thankfully, one member of the class had brought his brains with him and was able to answer. You are the Messiah. You are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, Well done. You've got your dreams, don't you? Do you know, of all the things that you need, boys and girls, and slightly older boys and girls, and even, uh, do, you know, do you know there are people that are over 70 <coughs> in our congregation that go to school twice a week every week? And they don't have to. Thank you.
stuff and lunchboxes and pencils and pens and eyeliners and rubbers and all the stuff we need to get back into things. We must not forget our Jesus. And we must not forget our King. These things we pray in His precious name. Amen. Now we're going to let the head stand for Sunday school. Uh, and uh, please do just chat to your neighbor as they leave us with their helpers and teachers. I found uh, a cute wee thing that you might like just as we settle down. Uh, this is written by a six-year-old uh, in their first week of school. And it's what they wrote to try and excuse what happened when they forgot their homework in the very first week of school. I hope you enjoy this. It's quite sweet. Pretty impressive, don't you think? But a teacher's lick in a spectacular fashion. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that course of action. I don't think it would get you very far at any age. Let's all stand to uh, pray just a short prayer before our next uh, hymn, our next hymn of praise. Well, Lord, our kids have just gone out to Sunday school and we thank you for them. We thank you for, uh, Lord, the, the, all that they want to know. And we ask your forgiveness, Lord, for the many ways, perhaps, in which we could do better. That was written on the bottom of a lot of my homeworks and a lot of my reports could do better. And, Lord, who do they look to to help them grasp faith and understand faith? They look to us. They look to the way we behave and the words that we speak. And, and Lord, we are sorry because we could do better. We could make you more of a priority in our home routines. We could make you more of a priority as we make our decisions. We could make you more of a priority and allow our young people to grow up with a greater love and a greater grasp of the wonder of God and the amazing love of Jesus Christ. So Lord, we say sorry to you this morning and we ask you, Lord, to help us do better for you are our great teacher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we stay standing to sing our next hymn of praise, your name as morning dawns and evening fades.
a question and answer version of the Apostles Creed please do join in do you believe and trust in God the Father creator of heaven and earth I believe and trust in him do you believe and trust in his son Jesus Christ who redeemed the world I believe and trust in him do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, everybody. Well, hands up if you have been a guest or a part of a wedding in the last three years have you been at a wedding a wedding service a wedding reception have you been a bridesmaid have you been a bride have you been a groom hands up very high let me see the hands a, a good lot of you a good lot of you well then you will be able to tune in really well to our theme this morning we've been thinking about stories jesus tells parables is the bible name of them uh, the stories that Jesus tells are amazing. Uh, they make us think. Uh, we look at the same story and different people draw really different messages from the same story. So it's a great source of conversation and some will say debate within houses about what that story might actually mean. And in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, and you might want to look it up in the Bibles that are scattered around the church, uh, we have one of these great stories that Jesus tells. I'm not going to read it all, uh, but I'm going to read the first little section of it. It's in page 23 of the New Testament sections of your Pew Bibles. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. Now, I'm going to stop there. 
That, that, that's kind of, well, there, there's the framework of the story. It's a wedding reception. Uh, I think the worst wedding, I have to be careful, it's not a member of this church, so I'm not going to divulge any deep, dark secrets. The worst wedding reception I was ever at will be in an unnamed hotel near the Bottom Monument, and it had a green, hairy caterpillars everywhere in the, in the starter. And I mean everywhere. And I mean real thumpers of, you could not not see these things. They were furry and they were bright green and they were everywhere in the starter. Now thankfully the, 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 the groom, Aaron, who is the captain of Lard Rugby Club, not a guy you really want to mess about with, his lifelong ambition was to be in the jungle getting out of here. So this was his dream wedding reception. You know, a Bush Tucker challenge. And he tucked in to green caterpillars and all in the prom cocktail, which they were right. Anyway, most other people didn't tuck into that. But we love a wedding. We love uh, the whole process of being invited to a wedding. Uh, if it's a family wedding, we love that. But if it's a high society wedding, you know, if you're going to be in the Tatler, well, that's even more special. If you're going to be in the local paper, you're all in the queue outside Logan's to buy your shoes and your handbags from about three years in advance. What about if it's a royal wedding? Because that's a story. A king threw a wedding banquet for his son. Imagine being invited to a royal when that would be really, really special. Really special. And I think most of us would move heaven and earth to be at an event like that. I had the joy to be talking to a member of this church who was at Harry and Meghan's wedding. I think that's a royal wedding, isn't it? Over at Windsor Castle. And they were at that. It was an amazing experience. I think we would just jump for joy at that. But let's read on. What happens? That's the scene of the story Jesus is saying. There's a great king, his son's getting married, there's a great feast for the fall. Let's hear what happens next. He sent his servants, his slaves, to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business, while even others seized the king's servants, mistreated them, and even killed them. This is, this, is, this is a story Jesus told. That's not normal behavior at any wedding, never mind a royal wedding. These folk who were invited, they seem to set themselves completely against the king and his son's wedding and the invitation, and they were doing almost anything except coming along to the wedding banquet. They were going to their work, they were going to the farm, they were going to their business. They would rather have an ordinary day than go to the king's son's wedding banquet. What is all that about? And it goes sour. There's violence, there's murder. They are so against coming to this wedding. So we're challenged immediately here with a story that Jesus is telling we're immediately suspicious that something is going on here that is far deeper than a make-believe king with his make-believe son having a make-believe wedding to which nobody in a make-believe world is going to turn up. Jesus is trying to, to say something to those who heard the story then and those of us now who are hearing the story today. What's going on? Now, I, I've had a bit of time to read big, thick books with dust on them, and I stole that tell you all in depth about everything that Matthew's Gospel is ever supposed to be. And, and, and I suppose 
what these guys over hundreds and hundreds of years, what they would say to us as we are kind of left a bit upset by the way this story is going, is this. It's a story which firstly challenges ministers of the church. Because that is in whose company Jesus is when he starts telling these stories way back in, in chapter 21 and even chapter 20. Jesus has just arrived in Jerusalem and he's in the temple and he's having a running argument with the holy men of his day. They have not done a good job. They have not prepared the king's invited guests properly so that when they receive the invitation, they refuse it. It is a challenge to the holy men, the preachers, the teachers, the evangelists, those who know the king is going to invite the people to his big feast into his kingdom, and we have not done a good job. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's me. That was Dennis the Menace. Uh, that will be Emma C. When she comes in, I'm going to say that. Emma Carson uh, really started something that I haven't done. My wife tells me, don't do things like that. I'm sorry, I've done it. I'll pay for it later. Please don't tell her that. No, I'm not even going to put it down that road. <laughs> we do not do a good job for each other in the world in which we live, we do not make plain the nature of the kingdom of God and the king's intention to invite people into it. And if we don't make that plain and straightforward so that people, when they get the invitation, know what it is and know how to respond, they've fallen short. So there's a challenge. But then there's a second challenge. Let's read on a little bit in our in in parable. Verse 7, the king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, burned their city. He said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they find, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. The king came in to see the guests. He noticed a man there who was not wearing the right clothes, the wedding clothes. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. The king said to his servants, tie him up hand and foot and throw him out. Where there be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. This, this story about a king's son's wedding has more twists and turns in it. So already we're thinking, well, what's going on now? He just chose riffraff. That's the word one of the old scholars used. The, the, the high and mighty people who were on the invitation list first to the royal wedding wouldn't come, acted abhorrently, and were dispensed with. But the wedding went ahead, and Uncle Tom Conley and all his mates were invited, good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled. It's quite a, a, a game, a twist and a turn, and we're, we're looking at each other and we're thinking, well, what does that mean? Why is Jesus telling us this story like that? And what's going on now? And, and again, reading and researching those who uh, have written about this story over the years, it talks really about uh, the, the, the unpredictable response that people make when they hear the gospel. The way people react or don't react when you hear a gospel invitation. And, and the surprising nature of all of that. Nobody can really predict who will hear a preacher preach or get, get a wee leaflet in the street and their world stops spinning and they become a Christian there and then. Nobody can predict who that type of person might be, when it might happen. But God is inviting people into his kingdom, good and bad. And he is going to fill the wedding reception. There's not going to be an empty seat. And it will be really surprising who's at that banquet and who's not at that banquet. And then there's this funny, this poor chap with bad clothes. He 
He hasn't got loads. He, ha he, hasn't, he hasn't read the small print in the RSVP. Yet he's really surprised to suddenly be on the invitation to the event of the year and the tapper photographers outside and you're going to be in all the glossy magazines and all the online news reports of a weekend out in Belfast and all the rest of it. But he hasn't bothered to read the small print. He's not got the respectful, proper wedding clothes on. And having gone in by the schedule of teeth, he's now put out almost immediately. It's really upsetting, this poor chap. And I guess again, when we're thinking, well, what's the point? What is, what's going on here? The invitation may be generous, the invitation by the king, by God, to come into his kingdom may be unexpected, the invitation might be gracious, but there are still standards. God has a standard for those he invites. And you can't come in and ignore God's standards for life, for thought, for faith. So it's an amazing wedding story. And there are many more little twists and turns, but we don't have time to look at them all this morning. Uh, there's a message for preachers. And in a way, every Christian is preaching. Every Christian should lead that lifestyle. It's a message to us all. There's a message to those who hear and respond or don't respond. And there's a message to those who try to come in to God's kingdom, but they're not wearing the right clothes. They're not wearing, they're not adapting and adopting God's standards. It's another one of these amazing stories. The kingdom of heaven is like a king throws a wedding feast for his son. I wonder if you'll remember a little bit of this when you're next at the wedding. Let's bow our heads to pray. Lord, we thank you for these parables in Scripture. We thank you for the way they are easy to remember. We thank you for the way that they are unpredictable. We thank you for the way that they've got many layers. We thank you for the way that they provoke us to think. We thank you for the way that they show us in picture form some really deep and complicated truths about the nature of God, the nature of Christ, and the nature of salvation, the nature of the Christian life, and the nature of the world we live in. Lord, we thank you for this parable. It starts so predictably, but it goes very much off script very quickly in many different ways. And what does God say to us through this parable he told? Where do we fit in the scene of the wedding banquet? Lord, we allow the Spirit of God to take the Word of God into our minds and hearts and do good things there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> One of my promises that I made to Dennis before he, he let me fly solo uh, in this, and even worse, I have to teach the Spice Girl, Tennessee. I'm not talking about that. Uh, how to do this. Imagine me teaching somebody else how to do this. That would be a joke. That I wouldn't go on too long. Uh, so I'm trying to keep my word. And remarkably, we're doing pretty well today. Uh, and we're going to be finished on time, which theoretically is kind of quarter two or ten two. I want to say a thank you to Jeff. Uh, can't really think of something. I can't think of something to slag him off about. I always do when he comes. Jeff is available for private hire. Okay? <laughs> Very reasonable rates. But his preference is really to go and sing at, at, at birthday parties of people overeating. Okay? <laughs> He's not really interested in, in trendy rocker teenagers or, or, or kind of, you know, the, the youthful or whatever. His style of music really appeals to the overeating. Happy birthday, here he comes. He's going to get his own back and leave. 
Uh, so please, if you would like a business card, uh, I'm, I'm an hourly rate for a, 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 birthday, a surprise birthday party for your great granny at the over 80, just see Jeff after the sale. <laughs> Let's stand to sing our final hymn of praise. Uh, some of the greatest hymns we love are the old hymns, the <coughs> traditional hymns with their rich words and gospel truth. Uh, and we can sing them uh, in a very traditional way or a contemporary way. And one of the great old hymns that fits that is a, is a favourite of so many, Amazing Grace. <laughs> be seated everybody. Serves me right for slagging off Jeff, doesn't it? <laughs> when he suddenly plays three verses of the hymn that I don't have in the PowerPoint, that's another good reason for playing a traditional hymn which we kind of half know, so we can fill it in whether the words are on the screen or not. We'll get that, we'll get that one straightened out, or else Jeff is just going to continue to, 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 to challenge us that way. Let's buy our heads for a final word of prayer together uh, and please do join in uh, the responses to this prayer the Lord God Almighty is our Father he loves us and tenderly cares for us the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior he has redeemed us 
and will defend us to the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way. To God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forever. Amen. Please be invited, everybody, for a cuppa in, in the entrance to the church hall. If you brought a wee one and they're in Sunday school, don't go home without them. Uh, please do go and reclaim them. It's great to see you back at New Life. Pass the word around friend and neighbour who might like to come and join us as we pick up the pace. And may God bless you and keep you one and all in the week to come. Thanks for coming and may God be with you this coming.